Welcome to Cosplayland, I am Alice and today I'm going to show you how I made my Jashiro Nene cosplay. I made this pattern myself and I will leave you a link in the description in case you want to download it. Of course I started with my fabric. I actually got these two fabrics for my old bed sheets and I just needed a little bit of brown that I had from a project that I never did in the past. Once I had my pattern, I placed it on the fold of my fabric and placed some weight on top of it so it didn't move. Right now, I'm adding the seam allowances with an erasable pen. It is much easier if you use a clear ruler because you can see the pattern underneath. You can use a French curve for the difficult parts. It is time to cut your fabric. Use very sharp scissors. There's some that are specially designed to cut fabric. My table is quite small, so I had to cut a piece at a time. But if you can, I'd recommend you to cut every single piece at the same time, just to make sure that you have enough fabric for every one of them. If your table is too small, you can also use the floor. And of course, here's Kitana. She is today's helper. Hey, hey, you can't use the scissors. No, you don't know how to do this. Let me do this. Well, never mind. Don't forget to cut your pieces on the contrast fabric. And now we are ready to assemble the puzzle. As you can see, there's many pieces, some of them are the lining in red, and the main dress in beige, and all the details in dark brown. I'm going to start with the lining. And I should probably have ironed this before I started, but I will do it later now. Place your back part on top of the front. I am using wonder clips to keep my sides together before I sew them. Do this on both sides. And using your sewing machine, just join the pieces together. I told you I was going to iron it. Make sure you open those seams before you carry on. This time I'm doing the main skirt, but notice we have a pocket, so we don't want to sew this part. As I need to ruffle my pocket, I'm gonna make a cut here. Using a long stitch, I'm gonna ruffle the bottom of my pocket so it's roughly the same length as the top. Make sure your stitches are as even as possible. Once it's done, I will interface the back of my fabric. And now you are going to watch me do the pockets in a way which is completely wrong, like honestly, I don't know what I was thinking. This line should have been at the front of my fabric so I could see where my pocket was going. And probably I should have also waited and make the coat at the very end. Never mind, because it's all explained in the instructions. I'm placing my pocket lining at the center of my rectangle. And I am going to stitch them in place. Now I can place my pockets inwards. You can iron them now for a better result. Here I decided to top stitch them, which was another mistake. It looks good, it's just not what I wanted to do. 
With your lining together, you need to top stitch the edge. Oops, I kind of forgot to insert the wool pockets. So I cheated a little bit and I just hand sew this part on top of it. But don't worry, I can still use my pocket and it's completely functional. Honestly, you can't even blame me. How often do you get to use pockets on your cosplays? Well, on this one, you can. Let's move on to the scalloped edges. Once I saw the bottom part, I had to trim all the edges, making sure I reduced the bulk on the bottom part. Now it's time to turn your fabric, but you will notice that it's not very crisp yet. Here's the trick. You need a piece of cardboard, roughly the same size and shape of your edges, and you are going to place it inside your fabric. Now you are going to iron it, and if you can, use a little bit of steam just to set those edges very well. You see how perfect they are? Now what I'm going to do is join both pieces of the lining and the skirt so they make your skirt. So in order to do this I'm just joining the corners of each one of them and I'm leaving a little, a little gap at the top for the sleeper. You can join the top of your skirt if you want. Now I'm closing all the darts for my bodies as well as the darts for my back. These darts are made so the top of your fabric will fit your body and you won't have an excess of fabric and it doesn't look like a bag. By the way, I also have the tutorial on how I made the school. I will give you a link in the description uh, because that took me a while so in order not to make this a very long video I just put it in a different tutorial. Of course, this is how it looks after you iron them. Right sides together, I'm going to put the back pieces on top of my front so I can sew now the sides and the shoulders of my bodies. I am also preparing my modesty panel with a little bit of bias tape. For the colour, once my back piece was sewn together, I just had to add both pieces together and just sew around the edges. The same for the, for the modesty panel. And then I clipped all the corners before I turned my fabric. Don't forget to cut some notches in all those curves. Once everything was ready, I just had to turn my fabric. If your corners resist you, use your scissors or something slightly sharp to make sure those parts are pointy. As usual, you will need to iron these parts as well. Let's place the color on top of the bodies. I should have been lining this, but I didn't have enough fabric, so I decided to use a facing instead. In any case, you just have to sew around the edges and trim the corners so you can turn them. Now you can put your fabric inwards, and what you're going to do is understitch your fabric in place to make sure that it doesn't move anymore. In order to do so, sew on this part underneath the collar. Prepare your sleeves by sewing two lines of stitches at the top and at the bottom of your fabric. Then you will have to make a tube with them. With your sleeve right side out and your bodies inside out, 
you want to be looking at those notches that you should have done while you're where you were cutting your pattern so you will notice that there are two notches at the back and one notch at the front the bottom part should be quite straight but the top part is too big for your armhole so what you want to do is just pull from those threads and just gather your fabric until it matches the size of your armhole once you have done it you can do the same things for your cuffs so one side first and then just fold them on their own so you can just hide the edges. Time to attach the scare to your bodice. Place it as shown and join the edges. I will link you a tutorial so you can do the zipper as well. And for extra puffiness you just need to add a petticoat underneath. This is the final result of my dress. I am actually pretty proud of how it looks. And I think Melina likes it too. Melina! Just add the final touches and you will be ready for your paranormal investigation. I hope you like this tutorial, I will leave you a link in the description in case you want to download the patterns for it and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you like this tutorial. I will try and carry on making more for you so you can learn to do more cosplays like this one. Thank you for watching and see you next time!